my name is Tuvalu Patele, and I want to speak about uh, the township economy, okay? And I think preferably looking at the last 26 years, uh, looking at what happened and looking at, you know, some of the things that led us to where we are at right now, you know, and also most importantly in the 26 years from today. And the reason why I'm using 26 years is that I'm using 26 years basing it on 1994, which was the year that me and you tap in, all right? And every single one who's listening, you know, we were saying that we had this thing called freedom, right? So in the last 26 years, a lot has happened, right? And in the next 26 years, meaning that in 2046, a whole lot will still happen. You know what I'm saying? And I want us to look at all those different dimensions, looking at how these things affect us. Because here's the, here's the truth about, about almost, you know, what we're doing now and, and everything. The truth is that everything that happens in life affects everything. You know what I mean? Like every single thing affects everything. So we have to speak about the township economy. Why? Because it affects me and you. Whether we want to agree or don't agree, or even whether we stay in some nice suburb somewhere, it still affects us. Why? Because there's the family that we have that is still stay that is that is still staying there. That if the township economy is not well developed, they might become you know on your tap. You know because now that means that you're gonna have to be able to help them. And then another of these things they connect each other. And that's why I believe that we have to you know discuss them and speak about them a little bit deeper. Now I first want to speak about the different ages that you know has happened or that has evolved throughout our existence on earth i mean like human beings have existed throughout uh the you know the planet in different industrialization right you know we're looking at the fact that we existed during an era whereby we used to depend on agriculture as our way of life you know what i'm saying and then as time went on we we well grew agriculture obviously every single thing that we do we build on another thing you know like from agriculture we moved to what you know we used to call which we still use which we still call mass production okay so we moved from agriculture to mass production not to say that agriculture is no longer there it's still there but our our, our main focus in that era was mass production then we moved from mass production to electronics and information type technology you know this is this is this is the, this is the time whereby the internet became became the thing you know where we we started, we started to, uh, to to understand how to use this thing called the internet and electronics to get work done and the, the the reason why these different ages are so key you know is because all these different ages you know they tell us who we are in the present and they tell us the type of economy that we exist in because the different ages that exist whoever that controls them or whoever that understands them is the one that will always control the economy okay then you know the last one which is the fourth industrial revolution which we are literally you know at the tip tone of it is obviously what we call ai robotics and also the internet of things so these are the four different ages or the four different you know industrialization industrialization that we have we have lived on as human beings, you know, looking at agriculture, looking at mass production, you know, uh, looking at, you know, information technology and ele electronics and also looking at AI ro 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 robotics and also the internet of things. Now, the question might be, why is this so key or why is this so irrelevant? I said it earlier, everything affects everything. What ha whatever that is happening in China is affecting some kids down there in the middle of, you know, in the middle of Africa, or some kids down there in the middle of, in the middle of, you know, the, the U.S. Because every single thing affects every single thing. I think, I think even today we're even at a better space to understand that everything affects everything. Why? Because some guy in the middle of Wuhan in China he did whatever that he did, and then boom, there was one case corona in China, and today. As we stand, the whole world is under lockdown. You know what I'm saying? Because everything affects everything. Now, the second thing that happened, if we look back into our past, is that you know we have have different money systems. You know, as the as as the human race. I mean, like for example, we started using the butter system. You know what I mean? Whereby you know you you exchange. You gave me whatever that you have, and I I gave you what I have, and then that used to be our money system. You know that we use you know maybe for example you need you, you 
you needed mini milk, but you had uh, maybe an X, you know, or maybe you had uh, a different fruit that I needed or vegetables that I needed or whatever that you needed. So that was the system that we used. We used a butter system, okay? And then we moved from the butter system to what, you know, we still have, but we, we call the coin system, okay? Then from the coin system, we moved to the to the paper bills, okay? From the paper bills, we moved to the digital money. You know, and currently, again, we, 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 we spin about Bitcoin, you know, which, 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 which is said to be another money system that we might be using in a few years. Now, looking at the two things that I, that I just spoke, I, I spoke about now, which is the evolution of industries, you know, and, and, and also the different money systems that we've been using, the reality of the fact is that every single thing is always changing. It's just a fact. Whether we want to agree with it or we don't want to agree, every single thing is changing. And in many cases, what happens is that when people don't adapt to the change and they adapt it to it later, they become, I don't want to use the word slave, but I think it's just the perfect way to, to use. They become slaves, okay, to people that have got into the system earlier. And when we look at the African communities, you know, we're looking at um, African communities in, in, in a broader perspective. African communities somehow, they have been slow to, to understanding the change that is happening, you know. Uh, and because of that, you know, we tend to become uh, slow to change. And when we become slow to change, we become slow to understanding what is happening right now. You know, and that is one of the biggest uh, shortfall that we have encountered as the African people, okay? Over the, over the last, you know, years that we have existed, you know, on earth. And when we look at these two things, you know, the different money system and also the evolution of industries, we, are, we realize that there's only one thing that is common. And that is all these two things, they affect money, okay? And the reason why it affects money and money is so important is because money answers all things. It's just a fact, you know? Money answers all things. Me and you, Tapelo, we wake up every single day, okay, to go and work because I know some people love to say things like, no, I don't work for my, you know, like say all, which sounds nice, you know, but all of us need money to survive. You know, it's, a, it's, it's just how it is, okay? We need money in order for us to survive. And money, because of every single thing that is always changing, is always following a pattern, which is current. Looking at the fact that money is always evolving of way based, you know, it's always based on what's current, okay? And in many cases, when we don't change with the times, when we don't change with the system, when we don't adapt, okay? When we don't adapt to so what's current, you know, we end up not even understanding why don't we have money, okay? And because we don't understand how we do, why we don't have money, what happens is that we fail to build our own economy, okay? Which is the most important thing that I want to speak about, okay? Which is that every single community has an economy, okay? You know, like... Um, Put a child up in free state. I think that's where you're from. Uh, 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 I'm not sure, but I think so, right? <laughs> so, put a child, for example, has its own economy. Okay. You know, Jobek, Santen, Northwest, every single community, whether it's a community, whether it's a province, or whether it's a country, it has its own economy. And the economy, if it is not intentionally developed over time, unfortunately, the people tend to become slaves to those that understand the times of the economy. And that's why this is so crucial for me and you, uh, Tabelo, to understand what happened in the last 26 years or to understand what happened in the last 100 years, to understand why our township is where it is today and understanding that if we don't do anything about it, okay, in the next 26 years, we will be slain in our own communities because, because, because here's the, here is the, here is the, is the, is the, is the truth that's, that, that has a little bit, you know, which it doesn't have, but it has a, a little bit, which is, which, which is, which is this business 
on, on, the, on itself is the driver of economy, okay? Business is a driver of economy. And because business is a driver of economy, whoever that runs the business in any community runs the economy. That is the real deal. Business is the driver of economy, okay? And whoever that runs the business within a community runs the economy of the community. And this is, that's why this is so crucial to understand. And you know, that's, you know like, like we live in, in, a, in, a, in a country, for example, sometimes we tend to um, want to say no to people doing business in our own space. And, you know, we do all, 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 all these things. And, 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 and in the reality of, of business, right, is that business is actually a sport, okay? You know, it's a sport whereby people compete. I mean, like, for example, right, th th there is a sport that we call netball or basketball or soccer. Let's speak, let's speak about, about, about soccer, right? So soccer plays for 90 minutes, right? So 45, 45, and then, you know, if it happens that we drew and the gay, gay, gay competition is, is serious, then there's, like, um, you know, extra time uh, or, uh, you know, there's penalties and all, all those things, right? So in, 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 in sports, we play for 90 minutes, okay? So we play and then, you know, and then once we're done, we're done. Then we, 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 we go home, we, we celebrate, right? We won, right? Now, in business, the sport is so on that it happens 365 days, every single day, even when you are sleeping. In the sense that while you are sleeping, someone else is thinking about taking you out of business. You know what I mean? And the thing is that in this sport, anyone can enter and compete with you at any time. You know what I mean? Because the rules in the sport are different compared to the rules juggle netball or rules juggle soccer because every single thing happens every single time all, all the time. And that's why this is crucial for us to understand. Hurry. No matter how much we can hate or we can fight or we can do all these things and bad things, unfortunately, the truth is that the man don't just go anywhere. Because in this sport of business, anyone who can compete is allowed to join. Right? According to the law of the, of the country. But anyone can join at any time and compete. Meaning that Whoever that wins and whoever that loses is dependent on how good they are. <laughs> you know, it's just what it is. Whoever that wins and whoever that loses is purely dependent on how good they are. Okay? And the truth is that in the last 20 years or 26 years, we did not do as good as the black community. You know, we have to say, like, <laughs> like, I mean, like, the writing is on the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The writing is on the wall. We didn't do as good, you know? And, 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 obviously, that it is, it is what happened, okay? And looking at the next 26 years, then we can determine how the score will look like. Because this thing, it is a competition. Whether we agree or we don't agree, it is a competition. Someone is coming in front of shop as we speak today and is about to open up a shop that you have. And guess what? He wants customers just like you do. It's a fact. We can't run away from it, okay? And what happened in the last 26 years, right, is that more foreign nationals started to enter the market slowly and surely. And not only just foreign nationals, by the way, and also mods, meaning that there were more high like professional businesses that entered the market, okay? There were more foreign nationals that entered the market. And guess what? They are all competing to the very same customer that you also want. And that is the reality of where we are at, you know? And, and looking at where we are at and into the next 26 years, you know, it, it's... It's quite vital to also look at what will happen in the next 26 years. Because here's the reality. If we do business the way we did it the last 26 years, in the next 26 years, we will have nothing at all under our name. You know what I mean? Because if we do every single thing the way we did in the last, in the last 26 years, I kid you not, the next 26 years, we'll stay in our own communities and we'll own nothing. Why? 
because whoever that controls the economy or whoever that controls the business controls the economy and he that controls the economy controls the people controls the people you know who <laughs> and, and 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 the reason why this is so vital you know is because you know i believe that there's three shortfalls that we have we have had in the last 26 years okay three shortfalls the first one which which we have had in the last you know 26 years is that um we as the african township entrepreneurs we have failed to adapt okay and this is so crucial you know this is so crucial because because you know we live in a world in all, all in all honesty where the sub the the, the, the strongest survive okay where the strongest survive meaning that if we fail to adapt okay firstly adapt to the changing times adapt to things that are happening you know adapt to to the knowledge that is current adapt to the technology that is present unfortunately um there's no way that we'll be able to regain our market okay the second thing is that one of the second shortfall that we have had in the last uh, 26 years is that we failed to operate as a single unit okay you know looking at the entrepreneurs within the township economy okay we failed to operate as a single unit what i mean by a single unit is that when people fail to operate as a single unit they fail to regulate and create a system okay let me give you an example you look at at many industries which we call for example that they are dominated by a specific group of people okay so what happened is that because the whole thing is a competition and is a game what they did is that they created rules and regulation to create not easy access okay not easy access into an industry why is this vital the reason why it's vital is because if anyone can enter the market at any time they want and compete with you your results will be unpredictable okay but when we create a single unit that create rules and regulation that operate our system okay what we're doing is that we are protecting ourselves okay and we are also protecting our kids lunch because someone when they enter the market they're not only just coming up to you they are coming up to your kids lunch they're coming up to you know every single thing that you have and that is why it's so it's so crucial to understand that if me and you type in, don't sit down and speak about how to regain this market okay that we lost because yes we lost <laughs> we don't want to agree we don't want to say no we didn't lose man love you know we did lose you know at some point we owned over 98 percent of this market at some point and as the foreign nationals entered the market and decided to compete with us we lost you know and it's okay to say that we lost why because we need to sit down and have a strategy on how, what what are we going to do to regain this market it's just what it's just what it is we're not going to do it by fighting by throwing the fires and <laughs> that's not going to happen and that's not going to help and guess what we've been doing that the last 26 the, the last 10 years you know or whatever the time we just we we started to protest and say they must go they are not going anywhere <laughs> they are not going anywhere you know <laughs> but that's not my just because we're going to throw stones they're not going anywhere why because this thing is a competition and they are aware that they are here to compete and until me and you sit down and then have a strategy on what are we going to do to regain the market okay unfortunately <laughs> we might just be surprised on what would happen in the next 20 years because the man just not own the businesses the man just own each and every single thing because like i said i'm gonna say this again one more time whoever that controls the business in a community controls the economy and whoever that controls the economy controls the people okay is that whole circle over and over it starts with the business is the economy and it's the people why because the people are going to be hungry okay the people are going to look for jobs <laughs> you know the people are going to look for someone who can supply and guess what if you as a black man can't supply don't think they want to come to you and be like hey man supply because you, you can't you can't supply they're going to go to someone else whoever it is it doesn't matter what because when
So that's why it happened. If me and you can sit down, Brian, right, and we discuss and we speak about strategies on what we have to do to regain the market, and I'm using the word regain intentionally because this thing is the reality of the times that we don't like to speak about, okay? The reality of the time is that the current market, unfortunately, you know, it has, it has been taken away from us, okay? Why? Because business is a competition. So what do we do? We plan, we sit down, we discuss, we strategize. What must we do to go back into the market, okay? And to regain exactly what we have lost, okay? Then the third shortfall, which is so crucial, you know, is that the African people for the last 26 years, they have been operating what we call a sponsorship mentality business. Okay, so this business is the business that is purely created to survive. Okay, it is created to make sure that we have food on the table and we are breathing. And tomorrow we we'll do the very same thing. Why? We have food on the table and we want to survive. Okay, and the problem with this type of business is that it is not sustainable in the sense that it won't create wealth. Wealth. Okay. Of your kids, kids. I mean, like looking at the reality of the fact is that many of the businesses that are given to their children after their founder, which is the parents, pass on, they give them to their children while they are on ICU mode. Well, many, many of them are in debt. I mean, like we can drive across down the street, whether it's in any township, you will find buildings that at some point they were operated at a very high level when the founder was still there. And then the guy passed on, unfortunately, the business today is not even making any money. You know what I mean? Why? Because there was never a transition into looking into, into the future that the day I die, what would happen? Okay, if this will happen, let me train these kids as soon as right now. And that's why the third shortfall is so key. And the short and the third short shortfall is the fact that most Africans in business, they're not they are not obsessed to knowledge, okay? They're not obsessed at performing at a very high level in business. They just want to have a business and then, you know, run their mouth and say, I'm not busy, I'm not a I mean, like, yeah, we are fine and we are there, okay? We, we, we are there, you know what I'm saying? But we need to move beyond the panda. One time, like, we need to move beyond just okay why because we want to create a strong business that is built literally and compete with any business okay I, I, I mean i mean i mean any business has to grow right it has to grow from everyone like wherever we start it doesn't matter where we start right whether we start in a shack or on the street right but we have to grow beyond just starting on a shack okay because you know, a business that is down the street is not sustainable. It is what it is. It is not sustainable. And that's why we have to be obsessed to knowledge. We have to want to know why do other people do it better than me? Okay? We have to be obsessed to understanding the dynamics that influence the business. We have to understand how does money operate. We have to be obsessed to knowledge almost each and every single day. This is one thing that we cannot avoid because if we avoid this, what's gonna happen is that the very same thing that happened to those that were before us that lost the market will happen to us. Why? Because people are still coming into our, mar into our market. They are coming. I mean, like it is, quite, it is quite obvious looking at South Africa, right? Looking at the fact that, in, in, you know, you know like, 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 the economy is spreading towards the, like right now it's spreading from the township into the villages, okay? And this is happening each and, and there's nothing we can do to stop this. And if we don't understand, and we don't, if, if we don't know, okay? Unfortunately, other people will come into our space and into our market and beat us at our own game. Why? Because we don't know, okay? You know, we perish, we, we fail because we don't know how things operate. No, we don't fail because, because of whatever mystery or because we black or because of any other thing. It's because we don't know, okay? If, if I were to give you ingredients, right? And then we like cook this cake and then you cook it, okay? So however you cook the cake and how I cook the cake will purely depend on who understand how to, how to bake this cake. You know what I'm saying? It will purely depend on that, on how... How do you know? What do you know about baking this, 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 this cake? And, and, and business, in all honesty, you know, is, is purely on understanding what you're doing. And many people don't know what they're doing. It's just a fact. 
you know, and, and I know we don't like to speak like this, but it is, it is the fact. Many people don't know what they're doing. So they are failing all the time and they're going back to the government, you know, to say, give me more money. And the government gives, gives, gives them money, right? They, they, they take the money, they fail again, then they go back to the, to the government and say, give, give me more, 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 more money. Because, because if you don't understand what you're doing, there's no way you go, you're, you're going to win. And that's why this last one is so crucial. We have to be able to sit down, you know, me and you. I, I, I'm looking at, at, a, at, a, at, at, at a time in our generation, whereby we're having stock fails, right? Simply to make sure that you are performing at a highest level in business. One time, no stop the car, no more car. I can't answer the room. One time, like, no stop the car, no more car. Except when we bury you and then all these things, and then when you get bent, I mean, like, those things are nice. You will die, and that's great. We need to do that, okay? But we are still here right now. One time, we are still breathing, and we have to win, you know. I mean, like the kids that are coming, you know, you're able to blame us one day and be like, the guys might not call about it anymore, and they did not win. That's why they'll be having those problems because they, we we did not win. Just like today, we are complaining. We are saying those that were came, came, came before us, yes, they did what they did based on what they had. We respect them and we understand that we are standing on their shoulder, you know, but we must also understand that it is our total responsibility right now, you know, to make sure that we win. Right, because in 2046, man, you, man, man, when me and you will be 60 something or 70 something, right? We need to be able to say, you know what? These boys, they did not see Kani. <laughs> One time, we killed everything. We built the biggest businesses. One time, we need to be able to say, we were united. You know what I mean? Like we need to be able to say, we were united. We did this. We did this. We were intentional. We went all out. We surprised every single people. One time, like people who used to think that black men are lazy, they were surprised. One time, because this they, they didn't see it coming. You know what I'm saying? We need to be able to be to say that one day to ourselves and be like, man, we killed it. You know, like we we, we smashed this thing out. And now that we did that, Lord take us. <laughs> one time. You know, <laughs> because that time, unfortunately, yeah, 2046 is coming. It is coming. And in that year, we are going to be kept responsible by those that will be before us on time on everything that we did, you know. And, and the reality is that, is that like, 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 like I said, more foreign listeners are coming, right? It's just a fact. More are coming, you know. <laughs> like, like, no matter how much. In one test to kill them. I'm a GDP, they are coming, right? So more prisoners are coming. More mouths are coming, right? That simply means that there'll be more competition than there is today, right? And that is that is all up to us. That with all these things that will be happening in the next 26 years, right? What did we do about it? Did we just go to the closest Shisanyama? And you know, we just need to fish it. What's up? We just need to fish it. Rumor of Edoria War, what's up? Edoria War, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And then buy a nice house in the, in the birds, you know. And then, you know, time and time again, drive us down to the township and be like, hey guys, hi, doing? I just want to say hi. And then out, you know, and then. After that, we say we lived, you know? That's why I honestly feel like a time for big talk is over, on top. Like, a time for big talk, like, hey, hey, oh, like, like we say all these nice things, you know? And all these nice things, they're not changing anything. And that's why I fully believe that we are the generation, me and you, Tapelo, me and you, on top, and even who's listening, we are the generation that will make what people used to think is dead to become the most beautiful thing ever on time like we will recreate everything you know what i'm saying we will make what people think is dead to literally be the most beautiful thing they've ever imagined but again it's all up to me and you that's what it is mm -hmm. wow wow <laughs> Truth expires at the point of awareness. 
and <laughs> until we become until we become aware of where we are we can guarantee tomorrow thank Never. you very much for sharing the honest painful truth this is yeah. where i want to i want as you were talking it just came to my mind uh, there's a there's a uh, a research that revealed that uh, it was it was studying different communities and the, yeah. the, the cash flow cycle. It says um, cash flow rotates 22 times within the Greek community. And then to Indian community, money circulates 12 times before it leaves the second. But within a black person's community, it takes an hour. So are we really, are we really lacking to make money or are we lacking habits of managing and making money? And in addition to that, I would want you to speak about your, 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 your personal view that in our own country, with our own currency, we are borrowing from the foreigners. Our own currency is being owned by foreigners. You go to yeah. the overtaken China. I'm not being a racist, but we're trying to raise facts that are very crucial. A Chinese takes your ID, he holds it for 30 days, and he borrows you your own money in your own currency. <laughs> you know, uh, Tabelo, everything goes back to uh, the way single unit, right? because a single unit is actually a system, all right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at uh, the Greeks or, the, or the, the Jews, or even, let's, let's not go far, the Africaners, okay? African, Africaners, right? If a people, right, don't have a system of economy, okay? Mm -hmm. Their money will not be able to rotate. The reason mm -hmm. why money rotates in those communities is because they already have systems, right? John owns a company that delivers, right? Simon mm. owns a company that sells flour, right? Jimmy owns mm. a company that sells egg, right? Uh, another guy down the corner owns a company that sells uh, uh, maybe, maybe sweet things, right? Or sweets, right? So what happens is that when I have money, guess what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to give it to John, okay? Because I need what, what he has, right? Because it goes back to the very same system of money that we use, which is called the butter system. Okay. We always want to exchange. Like it's in our nature mm. as human beings to always exchange, right? So if we don't have a system of operation and we want to be, here's the way, a one man stand alone, then we are a bunch of mm. things. Mm. 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 So then we are, we, are a, we are bound to fail because when one wins, right? When one moves mm. to Santan and they stay in the best suburbs and, and all that, th that doesn't give a reflection of us. You know what I mean? Mm. And, mm. <laughs> and when I say us, I'm referring to a people, right? You know, mm. like a people, mm. okay? It doesn't give a reflection when one goes down the corner and, 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 and they do whatever. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying that one should stay where they want to stay. You know what I mean? You should go and stay wherever you, 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 you want to stay, right? Where your kids will be raised well, you know what I mean? We should, we should, we should, we should, we should do that. I'm not against that, right? What, mm -hmm. what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that we should not understand that the system that exists is more important than the individual. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. System, our collectiveness is more crucial, you know what I mean, than the individual. Because when you operate as a standalone guy, okay? Unfortunately, the day you die, <laughs> it <goes down. laughs> don't you? Uh, we, with the recent lockdown, we've yeah. seen a number of measures that the government uh, was trying to, to, to put in place in, in trying to secure the cash flow for each and every person who's affected. And yeah. we saw something that was very really different. They wanted to assist, uh, or possibly before I ask, I ask that question, don't yeah. you think the way the informal sector sometimes box how far we can go as the dispenser shops? Say, say, say that again. I'm saying, don't you think sometimes the way uh, informal sector 
kind of box us as the detect shop owners as to what we can become if we yeah. let go of such a thing. You know? I hear you. I think I think maybe let's basically look at the reason why they use the word informal sector, right? Right. Okay. Remember, I'm gonna use the very same word again, right? Everything uh, is mm. ran, is always it must always fall under a system, right? So mm. every country has what called GDP, right? Mm. Right. Every mm. country has a GDP, right? So a GDP measures the economy of of a country, right? So, yes. informal sector are all the businesses that are not contributing to the GDP, okay? Yes. Because the yes. systems, this, this businesses, some of them, they did not register themselves, you know, some of mm. them, they, they, they are just operating because, you know, like, like we spoke about earlier, because we want to mm. eat. And mm. the mm. problem about that is that as much as the name can affect it, but the name is actually a representation of mentality that is used in that in, in that in that in that in that within that that sector, right? That these businesses mm -hmm. are not operating formally. Mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. They are operating mm -hmm. informally. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. those, most of the guys don't file for taxes, you know, they mm -hmm. don't even uh, they're just there and they're just selling and getting money, buying, selling and getting money and, and, and buying. So I, I, I think, yes, it does affect on where they can go. But in my opinion, I think every single business needs to go beyond just being informal. Okay? We need to go formal. We need to think about our business long term. 20 years down the line. You know, let me tell you a story that I once saw that literally broke, broke, broke my heart. So I went to University and the University of, of, of Pretoria, right? So when I, when I was there, there was a man, right? This man used to sell like the biscuits, like Zimbas, you know, like this normal mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Outside Nando's, right? Man, mm -hmm. outside, he used to sell, he used to sell this like loose drawers and all these things, right? Now, I was there for like, I think four years, and then I finished varsity, right? Now I went on, mm -hmm. I moved on with life, and then, you know, I moved on that mm -hmm. one time, I think it was after 10 years, right? I went back to UP, right? Mm -hmm. I went back to UP, Japan. Japan, like, I went back to UP. Do you know what I saw? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I saw, <laughs> I saw the very same man, mm -hmm. in the very same mm -hmm. place, the very same mm -hmm. way. Patience happens at the strength of understanding. That's why we cannot go as far. So with that has been said, do you think this is the right time to formalize the informal sector? Because that's the direction that 
the government wanted to take? There has never been the right time. Like, it is actually way too late. <laughs> like, it is long overdue. Like, it is long overdue. The reason why is because the minute we formalize, the minute we enter, you know, the, 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 the very highly competitive economy, okay? And what happens is that when we enter that economy, okay, we get challenged mm -hmm. to grow. Like, we get challenged, mm -hmm. okay? Like, the talk mm -hmm. of, I'm a small business, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Like, all this talk, mm -hmm. they fade away because in that economy, they're coming for you, literally speaking, in everything, okay? So, if we mm -hmm. want to build, like, highly, high sustainable growth businesses that can be able to serve our kids and our kids, 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 and our kids, and our kids, mm -hmm. kids, kids, there's no way we, 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 we can't enter that market. We have to formalize everything. Mm, we have. Mm. Look, I, I had I had a, uh, a chat with you of the guys last week when I was at home, and mostly their their perception or their holding back uh, uh, theory was that economy is not doing well right now for me to go to, yeah. to the space and look at things. Uh, shelter high, your people are starting to spend where necessary, so yeah. I can't be formalized my business at this time. So that's why I was raising such a question, you know, because yeah. I, I think sometime last day I did a, I did a, a master class on business scaling, you know, yeah. and with an understanding, uh, so one of the factors that makes business not to scale is not so much about the potential of the business, but it's the quality of content that pushes the leader, you know? Yes, come on. So, Speak to someone who's running an informal business and encourage him to go and compete in the highest ever economy, please. Because we need these guys to start honestly, participating. <laughs> oh, honestly, you know, you don't just fight Goliath head on, you know? Like, I mean, like the big guys, obviously, they've built that thing over hundreds of years. Some of them have been in business for over 50 years, okay? You know, we're not mm -hmm. fighting him head on, okay? Right? But what we are doing is that we are not looking at ourselves down, okay? At the level mm -hmm. that we are mm -hmm. at, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even, if, if, even if it's a supermarket, right? We build it in a way that at face value, right? It mm -hmm. looks as fully competitive, just like any other guy down the, down the block, okay? You know what I'm saying? But obviously, we are not going to poke on Goliath and say, man, Let's fight. <laughs> because that guy has a venue chain. That guy has a venue chain that can take you out of business today. <laughs> he can drop prices, totally rent everything, <laughs> and still survive <laughs> for 10 months, okay? But the point is that we don't operate at a, at a self-pity mode, okay? We don't operate at a, at a, oh, man, no, I am so low. I can't do this because, no. We look at ourselves, we say, no problem. This is where we are at, okay? This is where we are at, okay? And as much as this is where we are at, we want to build our business in a way that it can be able to be competitive anywhere in the world. What does that mean? It means we make sure that we have better products, right? It makes mm -hmm. sure that we have the right systems, right? It, it makes mm -hmm. sure that we have you know, the right marketing. We have, we have all these things, right? We have the right accounting systems in our business, right? You know what I'm saying? We have the right systems in business that we, have, we, we are using. Why? Because we are preparing ourselves, right, to be in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is the whole shift. So we are not necessarily going to poke on, on Goliath and then try to be a David because, you know, you never know what <laughs> 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 but we are in the market, okay? But we are in the market. We are in the market mm. and we are, mm. we, are, we are not trying to act like we don't know what we are doing, okay? We're mm. in the market mm. and we are being as competitive at our level, okay? Mm. At our level, mm. just like anyone else. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what... what uh, normally our minds operate the way of reference. So someone saw the tech shop industry 
and they just thought, ah, they're going to speak about township uh, tech shops. I'm not in. But it, it is possible for you to have a formal registered business, but run it as an informal site, as an informal trade business. So what Putulani is saying is really not only speaking about township, but it speaks about the running and the operation of the business. Because I think the difference between a town shop gentleman who was running that business for the last 22 years uh, where, I, I was, where I was raised versus the guy that I went for in Devon, the difference was that the way they operated them were different. So, sir, let me go to you and hear what uh, the questions that people have for you. Uh, right. Uh, Joseph Kubise had Pido to swallow. Thank you, Abuti. I just want to ask Abdi Tulane, how can we kill that spaza shop mindset? <laughs> I think to kill that, it goes to the third shortfalls, okay? Which is, we have to be obsessed with knowing. That's it. We have to be obsessed with knowing. Because here's the thing about the human brain. The human brain is wired to learn, okay? Like the way we run businesses with a special mentality is because it's, it's what we have learned over the number of years that we have been existing, right? So in order to kill that, we have to be obsessed to learning as much as we can, whether it's learning from people, okay? Whether it's learning inside books and just being obsessed one time to learning. Let me tell you a quick, a quick, a quick, a quick story. So... I once had a chat with uh, a business guy somewhere in yeah the middle of nowhere, okay, somewhere that side of the world, okay. And you know we were speaking, right? And then we were speaking about learning, okay. Do you know what this man said? He said to me that um, yeah, no, nah, he's not really a learning person one time. And I think that this is the language of many uh, business people, right? Like he said. I'm not really fond of this learning thing, you know, like, that, that's what he said, you know. And then he said, and then he said, like, I want nabra tools, ne? I want nabra, nabra tools, ne? This learning thing, not business, Ibo Magi. Ibo Magi. Ibo Gazi, you boy, you know. So, I, I, I don't want to be mean, obviously, in that moment, but I asked him one question, and that, and that was, Hopela will burn your finances. And so the reason why I said that is because finances of the business is a complete reflection of what you know. Yes, you know true. what I mean? Because the finances is a report card. I'm going to want to hear, hey, I just go on you. You know, how we have one of the other, hey, put on the report, right? Like, hey, 52, 100. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. out of 100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, in, <laughs> so, a financial statement, I can give you a report card. How are you paying for me? <laughs> so, this is this, 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 this gentleman. I said to him, Holy, you could follow on the report card. Do you know what he said? When I said, Kupal, I wanna your 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 finances. He said, oh, I mean, I don't have those things. <laughs> then I was like, well, one, this is our problem, right? Because we think we don't need to learn, right? And and remember that learning doesn't necessarily mean going to some nice varsity mm. or some Ivy League like Harvard or what, whatever, right? UCT, right? And purely means understanding that if you don't know, you won't input. Mm. Mm. That you're gonna get the knowledge wherever you get it. Mm. Whether you're gonna get it online, whether you're gonna go and buy books, whether you're gonna attend seminars, whether you're gonna go to school, what however you get it, it doesn't matter. Whether you're gonna work for someone in the space that you are in and then learn from them, however you get it, it does not matter. Okay, but Oksala, you, mm. Oksala, you, you have to learn because if you don't learn, you can't compete. Mm -hmm. Right. And you'll always operate with that spiritual of mentality because it's purely a lack of knowledge. It is what yes, it is. Th thank you. Let me go to the second question. Uh, uh, Shane Byers, uh, you spoke of regaining the market and the economy. 
Foreigners nations, nations have obviously done extremely well in dominating our market. In your opinion, what can we learn from them to cause transition and take back our business? How do we reverse the da damage done? You spoke of improving our knowledge. Which strategies can we use, if even possible, to take charge and begin to dominate our own market again? Okay, that's a lot, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think the first one, uh, which is what can we learn from foreign nationals. I mean, the mm. one thing that foreign nationals do pretty well is the, the fact that they operate as a single unit. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, mm. operate as a single unit, okay? And the reason why they managed to close down your uncle's partner shop, Chapello, and your brother's mm. partner shop in the other, in the other pro, pro, province is because when mm. people operate as a special unit, right, they mm. automatically become blessed. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. Yes, this is, this is, this is a, yes, it's a universal law, okay? Yes, when people operate as a, like, it doesn't matter what they do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't really matter what, 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 what they do. You know, when people operate as a, as a single unit, they are bound to become blessed. The reason why is because unity, which comes from the word unit, right, is a universal law. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a law mm -hmm. that is always occurring in the universe, right? That every single time we act against the law, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Every time we act against the law, right? What we are doing is that we are similar to someone who is trying to defy gravity. I want to say one more mm -hmm. time because this is so crucial. Every single time we defy law, right? Every single time we defy law, right? We are similar to someone who wants to defy gravity, okay? So what does that mean? I, I get up on, on, the, on the roof of a house and then, and then I try to jump down because I think gravity won't affect me, right? Because mm -hmm. every single thing is operated by laws. So you look at many foreign nationals, they are a unit, you know what I mean? In business, mm -hmm. we have this thing called the economy of scale, right? Whereby mm -hmm. if we buy one thing, right? but we buy it in bulk, right? That one yes, thing becomes the lowest price possible, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, so when they enter a market, when they enter like a community, maybe a township in your, in, in your, in, in your, in, in, in your case, and you find maybe, maybe 15 township, maybe 15 smaller shops are run by them. You, you find in many cases, they will make sure that whatever that they provide, they provide as a collective. And that means mm -hmm. they can play around with the prices because their cost price is very low. You know, whatever mm -hmm. that you bought, 180, they probably bought 125 because they bought the whole truck that came to deliver the stock. You know what I'm saying? So in that way, it becomes quite hard, you know, to be able to compete with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that I think we have to do, me and you, Tapelo, right, is that we need to be honest with the current problem that we have. And that is, mm -hmm. me and you, Tapelo, we unconsciously don't trust each other. Yes, we yes, unconsciously, yes, we don't think about it, but we unconsciously don't trust each other. You know what I'm saying? So we have to deal with that first. You know what I mean? Why? Because every single thing affects everything, right? Mm. How we mm. operate as family members, right, is a direct mm. reflection mm. of how we operate in business, right? So yes. if me and you, for example, fail to be just good brother, right, there's no way we're mm. going to get down in business and become good brother because already you walk into that meeting the first day and already round mm. tape on top. So we have mm -hmm. to address them head on. Like we have to be able to have these meetings, but more on a real life, like brothers and mm -hmm. brothers, like mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. And we are addressing the elephant in the room for a Baha'i and Sue. So we fix things, right? At an unconscious level, because those things, mm -hmm. they are literally affecting how we operate in business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that is the first thing which I think we can look to do to learn from sporting nationals. They, to be honest, 
And when I say this, there's some, there's some good to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Most foreign nationals are not really great business people in the essence of building a business, right? They are not mm. really like amazingly like, wow, right? right? They just know how to become a unit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you can go out to many of their sponsor shops, like their places is dirty, it doesn't look proper, like, you know, like things are, are, are not really properly, like, properly built, right? You know why? Because mm. they're in there to sell, to make money, and to get out, right? Sell the money to get out, right? So, so you look at their unit, which is how they act, right? Like they move as a unit. When people move as a unit, they can beat anyone who has 10 degrees from whatever the, the whatever the university. Because when people are a unit, they literally become blessed because the laws of the universe loves unity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, if you allow me to say something when I put uh, to that, there is yeah. something about these guys. They call it, um, they institutionalize the way they do business. So yeah. when you check, when they come to an area, they, they, they open one shop and all of them, they stay in one place. And they use yeah. what we call bootstripping. They allow yes. our community to expand these further shops. So they came with the funds for only one business. Yeah. Then from there, with you buying, 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 they expand it because they understand sometimes or, uh, you cannot be profitable if your cost items are not thoroughly taken into consideration. You yes. cannot be profitable as the whole business if you yeah. don't have a fast moving stock. Uh, the yes. hold up, I got involved in three months mentorship with uh, township businesses. And what I realized is we pack a lot of unnecessary things, you know, into our shelves that are not taking us anywhere. You, you don't even know what are the winning products for your business. Look, we, we, the, the cash flow is a, it is a blood to a business. Yes. So you don't want things that will speak for too long. You need things that can be convertible within two days. If my yes. operational cost for a month needs me to have 5,000, I need to have f things that can make 5,000 at least convertible within four days. Every four okay. days I get to sell something. So until you give attention to that such crucial parts, it will be impossible for that business to take care of you. It will be impossible. I fully agree. I love, I love so, what you said, Tatel Hori. Cash flow is the lifeblood of a business. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I honestly believe that Money to a business is like oxygen to the human body. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like um water, right? To plants, right? It's mm, it's, mm. it's like petrol to a car, right? You know mm, what I'm saying? Mm, it's like mm, electricity mm. to life. You know, when we don't take care of money, we are done. Mm, mm. You done. you spoke some. You spoke about everything. Every single thing is changing. And yeah. it, it, it triggered a, sec a certain question to me that let's look at the evolution of industry. And the lot of, when you study the GDP, especially our South African GDP, a lot of uh, sectors that contribute mostly are the sectors that they really consider as a township as industries. We're looking at taxes, we're looking at tech shops, but now, since we don't see the value of these things, or possibly we underestimate our ideas to changing the society where we are, we have seen yeah. uh, people with big pockets coming to yeah. townships and taking yes. the same model that is taking things that we do and operating yeah. with a global mindset in running business in our local country. Yes. And they grow. Yes. A typical yes. example of it would be would be bomb They do wonders. Yeah. They do make it with their hands. Yeah. A white person yeah. comes and takes a shed, a one cup on gas situation. All those regions are Australia for three thousand. Yeah. Then yeah. how to suffice this person? The same person Ella Regil and Kenna as business. Yeah. Please speak to such people. Please speak to such people for the evolution. Yeah trust in their own idea, trust in their own, uh, 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 believe in whatever that they, they, they pursue. Mm, 100%. I fully concur with what you are saying. Is that, it is the, I mean, like, 
it's the thing that is super Ilya on Hore. The rules are not really strict, you know, like people create their own rules. You know, like you can't stop that person from selling it cut a thousand, right? You know? And and on whole and again I said no cut to cut to cut to cut to into Ramza. You know what I'm saying? So we can't say that guy is unfair. No, he's not unfair. It is the, it is how the, the system is, you know, because the rules and regulations, you know, are not really saying I'm not allowed or I'm I'm allowed. The rules simply say let the best man win, you know. And yep. that's where the whole yep. thing of adapting is so crucial. Like mm -hmm. looking at the world and always adapting, you know, always adapting, always adapting. But here's the reality. You can't adapt if you don't know what's happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. You can't Most adapt definitely. What's mm -mm. <laughs> you can just keep going right there. <laughs> it's in K in. All right, uh, okay, there's more comments uh, or questions. Aujja Budile and Slav, yo, thank you for telling the blended truth as is with no sugar coating. Unity is power. Most people who operate in the informal sector have no knowledge of how to formalize their businesses or even the advantages or disadvantages of formalizing the businesses. For example, an old lady who is a street vendor. So in your opinion, how can such information be made available to such people? I think we have to really understand the reality, you know, of, um, of how the brain um, consumes knowledge, right? And um, many, many of this content, right, it, it's somewhere chilling in a cloud, some online, right? And it has not really yet entered our our cultural system. You know, thing like that is why, for example, many businesses don't have an example can be a cash flow or a balance sheet, right? Or or you know, a simple thing like the budget, like just a simple thing, like the 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 obvious things that we must have in business, right? Like many people don't have, right? Like a budget, right? The reason why they don't have them is because this knowledge has not yet entered into the cultural thinking, right? It has not yet entered into the public mm -hmm. domain of how we operate on a normal day, right? Because here's the reality. I got mm -hmm. whatever that you do in your personal life, you will likely do in business, right? What that means is that mm -hmm. if Tapelo does not have a budget today, I got and then Tapelo next week mm -hmm. I will have business, right? The likelihood of Tapelo mm -hmm. having a budget on his business life is not possible because Tapelo does not have it on his personal life because Tatelo and business, mm -hmm. as much as we can we can ignore that truth, they are one. You know, like these people are one, right? Mm -hmm. Business mm -hmm. and Tapelo they're, they're one. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. So whatever that is happening in the business mm -hmm. is happening through Tapelo's mentality, right? So we mm -hmm. have to understand the reality of this and then what we need to do to help Bong Hoon, right? Is to be mm -hmm. is to be aware, right? Of mm -hmm. how this mm -hmm. knowledge, right? It's uh, language because mm. you know, like many of this knowledge is documented in English, right? So we mm. need to be able to now say, okay, we need to teach Hone mm. this and this and this and this. How do we make it easy? We have to make it easy on Hone, why? Mm. Because if we just rock up down the cash flow, live with the rates and ratio, live with all these things, we're <laughs> gonna look at us and be like, hey, what's the land stress? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be aware. I think the most important thing is just being aware, right? Of, of for the, in order for to help one, right? We have to do this, 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 and this, and this. If it means we must convert the content into Benet, for Nkone understands, then let's convert it, right? But Nkone must not, must not, must not under. Mkono must not now think hurry, hurry, hurry. She must not learn the other la the other language, right? Mm, but mm, she can mm. use her own language, right? As a gateway into that. On mm -hmm. this language is Kiona imu introduce some hurry. Cash flow is say kalamuja how, right? This way it will come because it does this, 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 and that. And then Mkono will, will be able to have to have a a relative understanding of both worlds at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Language mm -hmm. as a gateway so, to be mm -hmm. able to bridge, 
Yeah, this is, that, that is the witch. We use it as a breach on top. We use it as a breach. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We use it as a breach to be able to, to bring her into them and say, like, oh, you must have a budget. I know you don't like it because you just want to roll coffee to somebody. But for the for the fella. I want to report that. And other problem in business, <laughs> you gonna create your own your own report card. Like your customers obviously mm -hmm. are the one that tells you how to perform, right? But at the end of the month, you are the one who must compile it. On so and that's why a budget, mm -hmm. cash flow, which I, which I think is what you specialize in, Tabel, right? Cash flow, budget, mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. Those things are so crucial mm -hmm. because they tell you exactly what's happening in your business. So without those those things, mm -hmm. who will not know if it was a challenge, uh, you know, if if one talk, like I just understand all these things, you know what I mean? And that's why it's so crucial mm -hmm. to create that bridge for her. So mm -hmm. you have to understand budget again. I read the robot, <laughs> sure, no, oh, mm -hmm. I got why well, did he did it a wall? I got mm -hmm. he did a wall, right? As I'm going to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over then it's a mahu speaker. But the champion thing that we, we can do, right, is to get one home, I got who can be sold out on time. Mm -hmm. And then we use mm -hmm. that home to teach Adam Konus. I'm not sure if there's a way like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I, I, I've, I've, I've been, I've, my, my, I've been, my eyes have captured this ever since I saw you. There's something that interests interest me, Kaka, the Canada and the ministers. You cannot yeah. qualify to be a minister if you haven't been a practitioner in the space. So a minister of small business is someone who, who started a business and who's still in a business. So now yeah. he understands the distribution of relevant information to other people. It, it's unfortunate because some of the problems that we encounter, in, we encounter in because policymakers and decision makers have never been in where we are. So they can't feel for us what we're going through. So yeah. I feel that we are challenged as leaders who realize this this situations that are happening in our hometown to say look if kibo now uh, uh, where i am my people need knowledge around this let me gather yeah. them and just dedicate my my hour and speak with them i love what uh, uh, one of the panelists uh, i think it was tuesday he he had written a business handbook in english yeah. and converted it to suzu and he said look yeah uh, tap I'm even open for anyone who would say, look, let's convert this book from Zulu and make it in Sesotho so then you can accommodate yes. other people, you know? So that's yes. why this entire meeting is about hyper-collaboration. We're taking yes. what is winning for Kutudani and I'm trying to yeah. replicate it in my life and see what impact it will yeah. do. Uh, hey, hey, people, are, people are firing in here. Uh, I've seen Tatua or a very informative. Thank you, thank you to Lani. No business can win as a standalone. Uh, the president, Lebuha Matade says, this is a very informative session. Thank you for the insights. Uh, look, we, we love it, we like it or we not. Uh, the lack of uh, Dr. Not Dr. Uh, Mr. Mapungo, he said until we change the content that we speak about as black people, we will remain the same yeah. for the unforeseen future. 100%. So this is us challenging ourselves. This is us trying to print a better content that moves us and provoke us to the position of excellence. So what yeah. are your parting words to our audience? Sorry? Your parting words to our audience. Oh, to our <laughs> Today, in the next 26 years, will be 2046, okay? We can call it today in the next 26 years will be the 13th of June, 2046. And whatever the age will be that day, right? I want you to remember this talk. And then in the moment, look at the scoreboard at business economy in the township. And if the scoreboard says that you lost, then it's your fault and my fault. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Tell me what 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 problem what what programs can you offer and how do we keep tabs with you? 
if we're interested in your programs? Um, currently, I haven't been open to offering programs to the public because I'm doing some, some work that requires me to be. So what I do is that I do enterprise development um, at Venetia Mine in, at, at DPS, okay? So I haven't been open to, to offering like programs outside of that because it's work that requires me almost all the time. You know, like um, it's my mm. brain of focus, you know? Uh, mm, but mm, other than mm. that, we can, keep, we can keep in contact on Instagram, social media. My name is Tony Patel on my page and also Instagram is Tony Patel. And then other than that, you can just drop me a, me a message that we can, we can continue this conversation. You forgot to mention that you also have time for my thinking institute. <laughs> <laughs> that one I have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, <laughs> on, 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 on behalf of our attendees, on behalf of my thinking institute family, we just want to thank you very much for coming and challenging our thinking pattern and thinking capacity around the subject of our local economy. Uh, I believe that it has added so much value, and I think that uh, we we need to go back and digest and be able to start developing plans that will make it different. I can just wander in 26 years. I don't want to be where I am. I really don't want to be where I am. Hi, it was that was real lebua, real lebua, real lebua. May your may, may your wisdom be grown. May what you do. God make favor in men and everyone that you will come across. May he ensure that whoever, whoever sets to assist you in your journey of life, they don't become reward driven, but they become servant driven towards where you want to go. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mota Wunsapena closing our 12th episode of Online Entrepreneur Survival Summit. Remember, we still have two weeks to go. But let's do something. We went for 12 sessions. Right on our page, Mind Think Institute, how has the journey been in the last 12 days? What have you experienced? What have changed? And look, we can only converse at the level of capacity. Remember, one of the panelists said that. So let's engage. Let's keep the conversation going. It's Sunday tomorrow. Relax, meditate over the content. Because Monday, we're starting at 7 o'clock. See you there, but remember, you are the best and the unbeatable element of success. Until we meet, I'm out. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you, Gabriela.